All right, welcome back. So, Navier Stokes, not Navier Stokes, woo! Um, Reynolds transport theorem is, is tremendously complicated. Um, we saw that we have a differential, partial differential with respect to time of a triple integral. That's not good. We also have a double integral of a dot product, um, which is also not good, right? So there's a lot of ways in which this can, this can go off the rails, if you will, um, which is a colloquialism that says that you're, you're crashing and, well, crashing and burning is also a colloquialism. Uh, things are not good, right? They're way complicated and very confusing. So let's talk about ways in which we can make these problems easier on yourself for sure. So number one of all of these techniques that we're going to talk about is choosing a smart control volume. Dot products are easy when the two vectors are, and I want you to answer this for me, write it out. Um, I'll give you a hint. It's either perpendicular or parallel. Wait. Actually, both are easy. Ha! <laughs> well, okay, so that was your answer. Answer. Parallel is what we're hoping for. Many times, problems become much simpler if your fluid can enter or leave perpendicular to a surface. So let's look at this problem here, which is a problem that we probably will give you at some point. We have a fluid jet entering a cart with a velocity v jet, doo -doo -doo -doo, velocity v jet, a diameter of d jet entering at an angle theta, and here's our control. Uh, sorry, not our control system. Here's our coordinate system, x and y. It's on wheels. And maybe I want to know what the um, rate of change of mass is within the system, within the cart. M dot cart. Maybe I'm asking you for that. Um, okay. If we want to make this simple, right, in terms of the dot product, there's lots of things we could do for drawing a control volume. And you will always draw a control volume. Don't even think of not drawing a control volume. If you if you if you don't give yourself the option, then you will always do it. And that's what you should do. You should always draw a control volume. Um, nothing makes me more upset than trying to grade a homework quiz or exam problem where a student did not draw a control volume, but then it tries to use it in the problem, use a control volume in the problem and messes it up. And I'm like, well, I don't know what you did. And remember, we give points for demonstrating understanding. Um, and if you don't draw a control volume, when a control volume is the thing we're doing for the next couple of weeks, you there's it's it's almost impossible to actually demonstrate the amount of understanding you actually have. So let's draw a couple different control volumes and talk about how bad they are. So I could draw a control volume that goes around like this. Whoop, 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 whoop. And this is a bad control volume because the unit normal varies with position a lot, right? I'm drawing all these weird vectors that go around. Imagine trying to do that dot product because the unit normal is varying with space. Oh, it'd be terrible, right? So let's try another dot product option. Let's do um, purple now. Uh, better control volume option, but not not the best, is this, where we know that the fluid is entering with some angle theta, right? So that's not bad. We can do that dot product, but why don't we make life easy on ourselves? Let's erase that real quick. And, and let's just do a dot product, or sorry, let's do a control volume where we have the fluid enter perpendicular to the control volume. If we do that, then our dot product is equal to one, and boom, we're good, right? So if we write out this formula now, remember, write out our conservation of mass formula. Zero is equal to d dt of the integral of rho over our control volume, dv, plus the integral over the control surface of rho v dot n hat dA. So, and here is where assumptions become crucial again. We're going to assume, to make this integral easier, we're going to assume um, uniform flow 
a and b, we're going to assume density is equal to a constant. How does that make this integral easier? Well, if density is a constant, it it's, can be taken outside the integral. And if our flow is uniform, what that is basically saying is that our velocity is also a constant. So it can be taken out of our integral. So if we've chosen our contr uh, control volume well, we have assumed a and b, this becomes um, vjet dot n hat times a times rho where this is equal to, um, because our fluid is leaving, this is just equal to negative vjet. So this is actually equal to negative rho vjet times a. Um, I'll give you guys a little bit of a mnemonic for um, remembering whether or not the dot product is positive or negative. Uh, if a fluid jet is entering a control volume, it is negative. And if it's leaving a control volume, it's positive. And the way you remember this is, imagine yourself having to go to the bathroom really, really bad. Like, so bad it hurts. And somebody's offering you some water to drink. Do you drink it? No! It's negative because it's entering, right? On the other hand, you could go to the bathroom, in which case <laughs> you would have fluid leaving your control volume, which would be a tremendously positive thing, right? Okay. So um, this integral, which looks very nasty, by choosing our control volume well, by in order to get make the dot product easy, by making some relatively easy assumptions, uniform flow and rho is equal to a constant, we were able to simplify it into just negative rho v jet times a. Right, A of the jet, which is awesome. So, um, we uh, now need to worry about this part here, this DDT of our rho um, dV. We can split this up, if you will, mentally, into zero is equal to D dt integral of our control volume of rho of our cart times the volume of our cart plus d dt the integral of our control volume of uh, actually the integral of our cart this is the integral of our fluid of uh, rho dv water like that and remember, we've already simplified this. This is equal to plus rho v jet times a, negative rho v jet times a. So this is not changing, right, with time. So the mass of our, the fact that we have a mass of cart, uh, cart mass in our control volume doesn't matter because it's not changing with time. That's equal to zero. So oftentimes we will only do our integral over uh, the volume that matters, right? And it turns out this is the m dot of water in our cart. So our equation now says that zero is equal to m dot cart time or plus negative rho v jet dot a. And um, if we rearrange this, we find out that m cart is equal to rho v jet times a, which is exactly what we'd expect. The rate of change of mass in our cart is equal to the density times the velocity of the jet times the area. So the, the volume flow rate times the density, which gives you a mass per unit time. All right. So um, that was a quick example, a little bit of an example um, using um, conservation of mass, Reynolds transport theorem with conservation of mass, but we'll start just call, calling it conservation of mass. Um, about how to calculate the rate of change of mass in a cart. Um, and remember we used three main tools to simplify this problem down. One was judicious uh, um, choosing of our control volume. We chose our control volume so that it was uh, perpendicular to our fluid flow so that our unit normal was parallel to the flow. We uh, assumed uniform flow and so that it was constant across our area so we could pull it, the velocity out of our integral 
and we also assumed density was equal to a constant, so we could pull density out of our integral. And the result was that we didn't have to do any integration at all. We didn't even have to worry about the dot product, really, because it was equal to a positive or negative 1, and it was equal to negative because it was entering our control volume. And we were able to solve for m dot cart really easily. In the next video, we are going to do another problem where we, um, we're going to have to integrate this time because we're going to have a non-uniform velocity. Um, and then we will also talk about what happens if our control volume moves relative to our control volume, relative to our, sorry, if our control volume moves relative to our coordinate system.